Hello students and welcome back to another algebra video. You know what to do, pause the video, try this problem in your notes and then unpause it and we will do it together. Tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the system of linear inequalities. So that means that I need to plug x and y into my both into both inequalities in our system and if they work great if one of them doesn't work mm, not a solution so we will take y uh, first we'll take the first inequality y is less than five and there's no x so i don't have to worry about plugging in x but i do have to worry about plugging in y and y is five so is five less than five no, five is equal to five. So if this were less than or equal to, we would be good. But because it is strictly less than, this is not true. So I already know that negative one five is not a solution. I already know that. We could check inequality number two just to be sure. Y is greater than X minus four. That would mean that five is greater than X minus four. Five is greater than, what is negative one minus four is negative five. And oh yeah, that's true. Positive five is greater than negative five. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the other one didn't work. So, not a solution. The end. All right, we are going to continue with section 5.7 today. Uh, systems of linear inequalities. Now, our learning target for today is that you know how systems of linear inequalities work. How do they work? What do they look like? Why do we care? So, and our success criteria is I can graph to solve systems of linear inequalities. So we're going to use our knowledge from 5.6 to graph systems of linear inequalities. Let's remind ourselves, ourselves what a system of linear inequalities is. It is a set of two or more linear inequalities in the same variables. So inequalities means that we're not equal, we're less than, we're greater than, we are greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, something like that. And the same variables means that when if inequality number one has x and y, inequality number two has x and y. We're using the same variables for both inequalities. All right, now, our success criteria mentioned graphing. What does the graph of a system of linear inequalities look like? I'm so glad you asked. The graph of a system of linear inequalities is the graph of all the solutions of the system. Now remember, when we checked solutions in the last video and in the entry task, uh, we needed the point to work for both inequalities. Both of the inequalities in our system. So the graph is, you know, we shade, we shade the red part. You know, the red line has its shading. The blue line has its shading. Our solution set is wherever they overlap. The part of the graph where the blue and the red overlap, that is the set of solutions to our system of linear inequalities. Because it has to work for the red inequality and it has to work for the blue inequality. So in the middle where they overlap, that is all of the solutions to both of them. The red, you know, where they shaded the red, that's the solutions to the red inequality. Where they shade the blue, that's the solution to the blue inequality. But the solution of the system is where they overlap. 
everything in between where they overlap. So the graph uh, of a system of linear inequalities is the graph of all the solutions of the system of both linear inequalities. Okay, so how do I do this? How do I make this? How do I make a graph of a system of linear inequalities? Well, step one, graph each inequality in the same coordinate plane. So that means on the same x and y axis. We know how to do that. We remember how to do that from section 5.6. So that's good. We can do that. Step two, find the intersection of the half planes that are the solution of the inequalities. This intersection is the graph of the system. This intersection is the graph. So where do they overlap, right? Well, step one, step one is make the red line shade the red line, make the blue line shade the blue line. And step two is where do they overlap? Where do they cross? Where do the half planes cross? Okay, so I think it's time that we move on to our first example. So step one is to graph the each is to graph each inequality. So let's make inequality number one red and we want to graph y is a less than or equal to three. So this is the boundary line or this inequality has the boundary line y equals three which means I'm going to go up three on the y axis since y is equal to three and I'm going to cross the y axis. That's not a very straight line. Better, there we go. And this is a solid line, not dotted, because we are less than or equal to. Okay, now do I shade above it or below it? Well, y is less than, less than means smaller than. So uh, that's one way we could think about it. We can also test a point. We can test 0, 0. Is 0 less than 3? Yes. Yes, it is. So we will shade where 0, 0 is. Okay, wonderful. That is inequality number one. Let's do inequality number two in blue. So we have y is greater than x plus two. So our boundary line is y equals x plus two. The two tells us that that is our y intercept. And the fact that x, it looks like it doesn't have a number in front of it. Remember there's an imaginary one in front of the x. So that means that our slope is one or one over one. So I'm going to rise one and run one. Now, this is greater than, not greater than or equal to. So this uh, line will have a dotted line. Ta-da! Okay, now, where should I color in? Should I color in up here, or should I color in down here? Which half plane gets the color? Well, one way of thinking about this is y is greater than x plus 2. So the y values need to be greater than this line. So I'm going to shade up here. If that was confusing to you, that's okay. We can also test a point. Let's test 0, 0, just like we did before. So I have 0 is greater than 0 plus 2. Is 0 greater than 2? No. No, it is not. So I am not going to shade where 0, 0 is. I'm going to shade the other half plane. I'm going to shade the other half plane, which is this half up here. Now, 
Step num that's step number one. Step number one was just to graph graph each of the inequalities. Now step number two is to find the intersection. Find the intersection. That's the mathematical way of saying where do they cross? Where do they overlap? So where in this picture do you see uh, the blue and the red on top of each other? Well, up here, this is just blue up here. And I don't want just blue. Down here is just red, and I don't want just red. But right in here, oops, this section right in here, this is where the red and the blue overlap each other. So I'm going to color that in black. And we'll say that these, this is the intersection. This is the set, the graph of all of the solutions for this system of inequalities because it's where the red and the blue overlap or lie on top of each other. It's where they intersect. Okay, let's check and make sure that we were correct. So, graph each inequality. They have a red one, uh, and they have a blue one. And then, step two is to find the intersection of the half planes. The solution is the purple shaded region. Now for us, I guess red and blue do make purple, <laughs> but for us, we colored it in black. But they're saying that the purple shaded region right here is the solution. And uh, we have the exact same region. Ours is just black and theirs is purple. A way that you can check your answer, if you would like to check your answer, you can take a point in the purple region or for us in the black region. You can take a point and you can check. Plug it in to both of the inequalities and see. Does it work? I should get a check mark on both of these. It should work in both of my inequalities. Otherwise, I've done something wrong because of this region should be all of the solutions. So if there's something in here that is not a solution, that's not good. We've done something wrong. Okay, so we were correct. Yay. Okay, I have a one more example for us today. Now, remember that we talked about uh, numbers of solutions. Like yesterday, or excuse me, in the last video, I asked you what would it look like for a graph of a system of linear inequalities? What would it look like for it to have no solutions? What would it look like for it to have infinitely many solutions? Is it possible to only have one solution? So we are looking, uh, in this example, we are looking at what does it look like when there are no solutions. So first step is to graph each of the inequalities. And in order to do that, I want to get them in y equals mx plus b form. So for this first inequality, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That gives me y is less than negative 2x minus 1. That's inequality number 1, but it's in y equals mx plus b form, so I can graph this. All right, and inequality number 2, I'm also going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I get y is greater than negative 2x plus 3. Okay. What do you notice about those slopes? Notice anything interesting? What does that mean? <laughs> Think about that. And let's continue. So let's graph inequality number one in red. Uh, I have a y-intercept of negative one and a slope of negative two. So I can think of that as negative two over one. And I will rise negative two and run one. And this is uh, strictly less than, so I will have a dotted line.
a dotted line. Perfect. Now I can test a point. Testing a point uh, will tell us where I should shade. So let's test the origin. Let's test 0, 0. And let's plug it into the original inequality. So I have 2 times 0 plus 0, because x and y are both 0 at the origin, uh, is less than negative 1. So we have 0 plus 0 less than negative 1. Wait a minute. 0 is not less than negative 1. No, it's not. So that means that I am not going to shade where that point is. I'm going to shade on the other side where 0, 0 is not. OK, and there we go. Now let's uh, graph inequality number 2 in blue. Oops. I have a y-intercept of 3. So I'm going to go up 3, and I have a slope of negative 2, which I can think of as negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to rise negative 2, or go down 2, and over 1. And again, this is strictly greater than, so this is a dotted line. Okay. Now, I need to test a point. I need to know where I'm going to shade. So, let's test the origin again. And I will plug 0, 0 into inequality number 2. So, 2 times 0 plus 0 is greater than 3. So, 0 plus 0 is greater than 3. Wait a minute. Is 0 bigger than 3? No. No. So that means I am not going to shade where the origin is. I'm going to shade on the other side. I'm going to shade the other half plane. OK. Then step 2 is to find the intersection. But wait a minute, do the red and the blue overlap in this graph? Is there any place where the red and the blue are on top of each other? No, the blue is over here and the red is over there and there is no in between. So uh, what this means is that there are no solutions. Because remember the solution or the graph is the uh, set of solutions to both of these inequalities. But we can see from this graph, there are no points. There are no points that will satisfy both of these inequalities. If I pick a point over here, it, uh, it satisfies the blue inequality, but not the red inequality. If I pick a point over here, it satisfies the red inequality, but not the blue one. If I pick a point in the middle, like 0, 0, it doesn't satisfy either of my inequalities. So uh, if you get a graph where there is no overlap, there are no solutions. Now, if 0, 0 had worked for the blue inequality, and we had you know something that looked like this, well then, oh. The solution set would be everything. It would be all of the red part. But that's not what our graph looks like. Our graph is completely separate. No overlap. So when there is no overlap, no overlap means no solutions. Let's check and make sure that we were correct. Graph each inequality. The Find the intersection of the half planes. The lines are parallel, and the half planes do not intersect. So the system has no solution. Now, just because the lines are parallel doesn't mean that there's no solution. Because like we said, if uh, this red shading, if instead it had been on this side, 
Well, then there would be overlap. Oh, whoops, that's not red. <laughs> if the red had been shaded over here, well then, look at all this overlap. There's a ton of overlap right here. So just because the lines are parallel doesn't mean that there's no solution, but when they're parallel and they're shaded on complete opposite sides, that's what makes there no solution. When there is no intersection, there is no solution. Wonderful! That is what I have for you today. So, now is the time, you know, to rate your understanding of the learning target and the success criteria. So, do you understand how uh, graphs of systems of linear inequalities work? Do you understand how to make their graph? Do you understand what the graph means? And can you make the graph? Can you graph a system of linear inequalities? If you can, maybe help a friend teach your parents about what you've learned. If you think you can, but you're maybe not too confident, you are good to start the homework and ask questions if need be. And if you are confused about anything that happened in this video, please, 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 please talk to your teacher, talk to a friend, come to after school tutoring. We are so happy to help answer your questions. All right. Here are some practice problems that you can do to practice the skills you have learned in this video. All of these problems are like example two or three. And example two and three were the same thing. Example three was just a specific example where there happened to be no solution. But we did the same exact process on example three that we did on example two. We graphed each inequality and then we saw where the, the shading overlapped, where the intersection was. So, all of these problems are the same, but some of them might have no solution. Okay. Today's launch comes from Amy Poehler. If you've seen Parks and Rec, you know who Amy Poehler is. You know who Leslie Nope is. And she says, take your risks now. As you grow older, you become more fearful and less flexible. Now, this, this sounds scary at first. When you read this, you're like, oh no, when I get old, I get scared and less flexible. And uh, that's not the point of this launch. The point of this launch is that now is the time to make mistakes. Now is the time to try new things. Now is the time to pursue what you want. Because as you grow older, it becomes harder. It becomes more difficult to take risks. If, say, I decided that, you know, uh, I love teaching, but I'm more passionate about the mental health of youth, I would love to stop teaching and go back to school to become a therapist or, or a psychologist. For young people. Great! That's a risk that I might not be able to take because I have bills to pay and I'm scared that if I just stop teaching and try to go back to school I'm not going to be able to you know pay for my house or pay my bills. Um, so there's lex less flexibility as you get older. As you get older and as you get more responsibility uh, there are fewer things that you that you can do because of the commitments and the responsibility that you have. So now is the time to take risks. Now is the time to, you know, maybe watch a lot of YouTube videos about psychology. Is that something that you're really interested in? That you really want to go to college and you want to pursue? Because if I decided that I didn't like teaching, that wouldn't, that, ooh, that would be difficult. You know, what, what would I do? What, how would I make money? What, what would I do? And I have a house to pay. I have bills to pay. So I'm kind of stuck. Good thing for me, I really like teaching. I love teaching. And I made sure uh, when I was younger, I made sure that teaching was something that I wanted to do and that I was passionate about before I signed up to do it for the rest of my life. Um, but now is the time to try a psychology class. 
try a web development class and see, oh, you know, I took an accounting class. I don't like that. Numbers, you know, not fun. Or, hmm, I'm trying to learn to code, but you know, that's way more like intense thinking than it's worth it to me. So now is the time to try new things, take risks, reach out to a casting director and say, how do I get on Broadway? What do you look for in a young actress that wants to make it big? You know, now is the time to take risks and try things that you wouldn't normally try because as you get older, it gets more difficult to take those risks. So what is it that you want and are you willing to take a risk to get it? That is my launch for you today. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. Have a wonderful rest of your day and thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Bye.